All right, today we are going to talk about subsets. We're going to talk about counting subsets, so how many subsets there are of a set. And then we're going to finish by talking about how to prove that two sets are equal to each other. Now, the word subset I think is pretty self explanatory, but I've wrote out a little definition anyway. So, if every element of some set A is an element of B, then A is a subset of B. Now, how do we write this out? I like to use a little horseshoe symbol with a horizontal line under it. So we'd say A is a subset of B. And that is the symbol we will continue to use for this entire discrete math series. Now, one thing to note is that a set is always a subset of itself. So we can always say that A is a subset of A, right? I mean, that makes sense from our definition. Every element of A is an element of A, right? Pretty straightforward. So now we're going to talk about proving that A is a subset of B. So it's pretty easy to do this. What you do is you let X be some arbitrary element of A, right? You take some logical steps forward and conclude that X also must be an element of B. Thus, A is a subset of B. So now I've defined two sets A and B for us already, and we're going to try to prove that A is a subset of B. So we're going to say A is the set of all integers x such that 9 divides x. And B is the set of all integers x such that 3 divides x. So look at that. We used our little set builder notation, which we learned last time. Now, I claim that A is a subset of B. But you can't just go around claiming things in math, you have to prove them. So if you found this video because you were searching for help and like you're actually taking a discrete math or intro to proofs class right now, I highly encourage you to pause the video right now and spend like five, maybe 10 minutes at most trying to prove this. Proof writing is hard when you're first learning it. And you're not going to get better unless you make a lot of mistakes on the way. So I highly encourage, again, to just pause the video and try the proof on your own. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it all out. We're going to read through it, and then we're going to make some sense of it. Okay, let's look at what we have. So let X be an element of A. Well, if X is an element of A, then there exists an integer Y such that 9Y equals X, right? And that's because the set A is the set of all X where 9 divides X. Now, this is equivalent to saying 3 times 3 times y is equal to x. Well, since 3 times y is just some integer, let's call it z, right? So now we have 3 times z is equal to x. So we can conclude that 3 divides x. Well, if that's the case, then x must be in b. So remember, b is the set of all x such that 3 divides x. Thus, A is a subset of B. Now, hopefully all of those logical steps moving forward made some sense to you. The kind of magic that's going on here is we let X be arbitrary, right? We never said what X was. It's just some element of A. We don't know specifically what it is. It's just an arbitrary element of A. And we showed logically that this arbitrary element must also be in B. So you can now find any specific element of A you want. It doesn't matter what it is. We know it'll be in B because we found that arbitrary elements X, they will always be in B. Thus, we can conclude that A is a subset of B. Now, hopefully, if you actually tried it yourself, you got something along the same lines. Our proofs obviously don't need to be word for word the same. That's just never going to happen. Um, and if you didn't, don't feel bad. You know, you'll get the next one. It's okay to get proofs wrong sometimes. It's how we learn. So now, the next thing I want to do, I want to move forward and talk about how many subsets, right? How many subsets of a set exist? So now you'll see. I already have the set A written for us. So we have the set one, two, three. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I'm going to just tell you the answer. And then we're going to go through and make some sense, right? So how many subsets does A have? Well, A actually has two to the size of A, right? 
Now you're probably wondering why, like, why, why, why do I have cardinality of A in my power? Why am I multiplying two that many times to get some subsets? Now I'm going to write while I talk so I could prepare us for what's about to go down. But basically, one way you can think about it, right, is that our size of A tells us how many, how many elements there are of A, right? Um, and for each of those elements, how we can kind of think of our subsets is whether or not we choose to include that element in each subset. So that's, if that doesn't make some sense to you, that's why I'm kind of writing out these subsets, these empty subsets right now, because I want us to make some sense of this. Now, let me just write two more. I'm moving as fast as I can. Now, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to look at each element of A, and we're going to choose to include it or not. And we're going to end up getting every single subset of A. Now, from our, my answer that I gave you, 2 to the cardinality of A, but we know the cardinality of A is just 3. So we must have here, let's say 2 to the third. We must end up with 8 subsets. So let's do this logical reasoning. For each element, I'm going to choose to include or not include it. Now, I'm going to start by not including anything, right? So our first subset has nothing in it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all the sets that include the element 1, right? So let's say we choose to include 1, but let's not include 2 or 3. Now let's include 1, and let's also do 2, but how about not 3? Okay, so now let's do 1 and 3. This time we'll leave out 2. Okay, great. And now the only last set to look at is the one that includes everything. So we're having 1, 2, and three. So now we just read out all possible sets that will include one. Now let's do the ones that include the number two, right? So we have the set two all by itself and nothing else. We already have the set one, two. So now let's just do two, three. And we already have the set one, two, three. So let's not write that again. And now let's look at all the sets that include three. So we'll leave out one and two and we'll include three. Now I already have the set one, three. I have the set 2, 3, and I have the set 1, 2, 3. So that means we went through every possible subset of A. We looked at each element, 1, 2, and 3, and each subset we have either includes or does not include, and we covered every possible case by doing this. So that's where our 2 to the cardinality of A comes from, and hopefully that makes some sense, right? Now notice in our... Uh, here, and like, let's make this a set. Let's make this a set of sets, right? So let's make this a set, separate everything by commas. In our set of sets, we include the set itself, A, so that's right here, and then we include the empty set. Now, we didn't use our little notation for empty set, but as you can see, that is a set that is empty. Um, and now we would actually call this, this set of subsets, the power set of A, right? And so, the next logical question that would come up about power sets is, well, what's the cardinality of your power set? And our power, the cardinality of our power set, right? So let's just say that power set of A is like P, right? The cardinality of P is just going to be equal to 2 to the cardinality of A, right? It's the amount of subsets of A. Now that we've talked about how many subsets there are, we talked about cardinality of that, the power set, we are finally going to finish this video by talking about how to prove that two sets are equal to each other. Okay, so finally, the grand finale, we are going to prove that two sets are equal, right? So I've defined, again, our lovely friends A and B. So A is a set of all integers x, such that x is odd. B is the set of all integers x, such that x equals A plus B, where A is even and B is odd. Now, you can, I mean, just look at it, right? You can look at how b is defined and clearly see that x is always going to be an odd number, right? I mean, that's something we can easily prove. We can easily prove that a plus b even plus odd gets you an odd number, right? So I gave us a very easy example to work with. And so I'm claiming that the set a is equal to the set b. Now, what does that actually mean? It means that if, if some arbitrary element is in a, then it better be in B. And if some arbitrary element X is in B, then it better be in A. 
Now, what does that sound like? Does that sound like something we just discussed? Well, to me, that kind of sounds like I'm claiming that A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Now, see, that's why we talked about, wait, hold on. I wrote that completely wrong. I'm saying B is a subset of A. Now, see, that's why we talked about subsets first, right? Because if we want to prove that two sets are equal, what we're doing is proving that both sets are subsets of each other, and that's only possible if they're equal. Now, like I said before, when we did our proof, if you're seriously like taking a proofs class right now and you sought this video for help, pause the video and try this yourself. I'm going to write it out like I did before. We're going to read through it and I make some sense of it. So pause the video now. All right, here it is. So let's read through this proof. Let X be an element of A. Since X is odd, there exists some integer P such that X is equal to 2P plus 1, right? That's our definition of being an odd number. Now, 2P is even and 1 is odd. So X must be in B. Now, I can already hear some people reading that and being like, wait, what? We just kind of jumped somewhere. Remember, our definition for being in B is that X is equal to A plus B, where A is even and B is odd. In this case, 2P is our A, so 2P is even. And 1 is our B, because 1 is odd. So that's why X would be in the set B. Now, we chose X arbitrarily, so now we know that A must be a subset of B. Now, let's show that B is a subset of A. So let X be an element of B. Since A is odd and B is even, there exist integers Q and R such that X is equal to 2 times Q plus 1 plus 2R. So now remember, if X is in B, then we know that it's a sum of an even and an odd number. Hence, 2Q plus 1, our odd number, and 2R, two our, two our, our even number. Now, equivalently, we can factor... Um, the, or we can undistribute the 2 from the Q and R, right? And we can rewrite X as equal to 2 times the quantity Q plus R plus 1. Now, this is just an odd number by definition, right? Now, if some X is odd, then it must be in the set A. So we've shown that X is going to be an element of A. X, again, was chosen arbitrarily. Thus, B is a subset of A. And so now we've done exactly what we wanted to do. We showed that A is a subset of B, and we showed that B is a subset of A. And since that is the case, it must be true that A is equal to B. And I mean, that's it. That's as simple as it gets. So if you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope you learned something.